गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द पैटर्न्स ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी एंड द इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंपोर्टेंस ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी we have studied two important theses proposed by scientist one is rivet popet hypothesis which was proposed by scientist paul elric and the second one is david tillman's long term field experiments now today we will discuss the next topic that is loss of biodiversity right in last class we have we have started this topic so again we are going to start loss of biodiversity so we have to understand this loss of biodiversity by the four important headings that is habitat loss fragmentation over exploitation alien species invasion and co extinction and then we'll move to the next topic that is conservation of biodiversity the importance of conservation of biodiversity to maintain the ecosystem balance okay and then the two important methods of conservation of biodiversity there are two important methods are there in situ conservation that is the conservation in the natural habitats and the second one is ex situ conservation the conservation in artificial habitats okay so we'll start with the loss of biodiversity okay so here Let's just start with the loss of biodiversity. Yesterday we have discussed about the things that is due to various human activities, the biodiversity get rapidly decreasing, and the activities are like overpopulation, urbanization, and industrialization. So the natural wealth is getting lost rapidly, right? The IUCN. international union of conservation of nature and natural resources it is a organization to conserve the nature and natural resources according to this organization the 2004 red data list approximately 784 species are extinct from the earth surface since last 500 years yesterday we have discussed about this 784 species in that B thirty eight vertebrates, three fifty nine invertebrates, and eighty seven plant species were there. Right? Some of the examples are also given here. The recent extinction, if you go dodo, it's the most important bird species. Belongs to the Mauritius. Quagga belongs to Africa. Halesine belongs to Australia. In Russia, Stellar sea cow, and three sub species of tiger in the islands of indonesia that is bali java and caspian so these are the recent extinctions occurs in a previous last 100 years now the last 20 years alone have witnessed the disappearance of 27 species if you observe that there are 3 784 species were extinct in 500 years but this last 20 years alone witnessed about the disappearance of 27 species so the speed of loss of biodiversity increases lot more right now the presently 12% bird species 23rd 23% of mammal species 32 of all amphibian species and 31% of angiosperm gymnosperm species in the world face the threat of extinction so in upcoming several years they are going to be extinct so it is the most dangerous thing regarding our status of biodiversity if you observe this careful analysis of record shows that the amphibians appear to be more vulnerable to extinction now here one word is given five episodes of mass ex mass extinction five episodes of mass extinction that is 
since the origin of earth takes place from that till now there are five episodes of mass extinction that is a mass extinction represent that a huge number of animals and plant species were extincted from the land this is called mass extinction so there are five episodes are already happens right the sixth mass extinction is in progress now now the sixth extinction is different from the previous five extinctions because the speed of this sixth mass extinction is very rapidly and it was if you compare this one is 100 to 1000 time faster with the previous five extinctions now why it is more rapidly going because of the human activities and it is occurring in the human period before that whatever the five episodes of mass mass extinctions were takes place it was pre human period before the human evolution it was takes place but nowadays whatever the extinction is going the sixth mass extinction it is occurring in the human period the present day and because of human activities it is rapidly progressing so it is more than 100 to 1000 time faster and as it is occurring in the human period it is called anthropogenic mass extinction what is anthropogenic mass extinction the mass extinction which is takes place in the human period because the study of human is called anthropology the study of human is called as anthropology and further whatever the sixth mass extinction is progressed now it is continuing process which is going more rapidly more faster and which is occurring in the human period that's why it is called anthropogenic mass extinction now what will happen if the mass extinction takes place now here three important points we can be discuss first is declining in plant production if the plant production will dec decline what will happen the productivity of the biosphere will also decrease if the productivity will decrease ultimately all other tropic levels are easily affected with the adverse conditions second lower resistant to the environmental protrusion this has droughts we cannot tolerate drought like conditions flood like conditions we lose our resistant power to these environmental hazards third increased variability in certain ecosystem processes such as plant productivity water use and pest and disease cycle that means the complete ecosystem will get collapsed it is not in a equilibrium state the number of trophic levels the or the number of organisms in different trophic levels are it also disturbed some trophic levels are more in number the organism one of the number of organism in some trophic levels all get decrease very less so it cause the disturbance in the food chain and food web also so it may create a very adverse condition to the ecosystem so these are different effects of biodiversity loss now what are the reasons of loss of biodiversity that is the most important point here we can understand this loss of biodiversity by the most important concept that is called the four evil quartet the four evil quartet is the concept given by different biologist to understand the reasons of loss of biodiversity now what is four evil quartet we'll see what is four evil quartet right here the present loss is all due to human activities that is in anthropogenic as we already discussed and there are four major causes and all these four major causes are considered as the evil quartet the most important word the four major causes which is given as the first one is habitat loss and fragmentation second is over exploitation third is alien species invasion and fourth one is co extinction first is habitat loss and fragmentation second is over exploitation third is alien species invasion and fourth one is co extinction 
right so we'll discuss one after one so first we'll start with the habitat loss and fragmentation right now the evil quadrant stands for four reasons habitat loss fragmentation over exploitation alien species invasion and co extinction now what is habitat and loss fragmentation the habitats are divided into different parts over exploitation right jitna zaruri hai usse zyada use kar this car this is the human activity basic human activity alien species invasion the new exotic species introduced into the different areas and third one is co extinction means if the two organism living together if one will extinct the other will also going to be extinct so that is called co extinction so we'll start with the first topic habitat loss and fragmentation now here now what is habitat loss and fragmentation now this is the major cause of loss of biodiversity habitat destruction is caused by human activities such as deforestation and increasing population leading to the loss of many plants and animals we are cutting so many forests to modify those land into agriculture field to increase the productivity of food which is very necessary to supply increasing population right so this is the human activity now if you go the data the tropical rainforest one covering more than 14% of the land surface now cover only 6 of right the tropical rainforest once covering more than 14% of the land surface now it is only covering 6% of the land area that means most of the 50% more than 50% the tropical rainforest area has destructed the amazon rainforest the lungs of the planet the lungs of the planet now the amazon rainforest called lungs of planet is being cut and cleared for the cultivation of soybeans and for conservation to grassland for raising beef cat now this is again the one most important reason right the further cultivation of soybean we have cut most of the part of amazon rainforest when large habitat such as amazon forest are broken into smaller fragments or pieces due to various human activities mammals and birds requiring large territories and certain animals with migratory habits are badly affected leading to their population decline if we cut the amazon rainforest into a different fragments because of the human activities whatever the different organisms depend on the particular large habitats they are also get adversely affected the degradation of many habitats by pollution also threatens the survival of many species many have extincted in the last 500 years we already discussed there are 784 species were extinct okay so these are the two most important thing the tropical rainforest cut down more than 50% that is it is come down from 14% to the 6% and most of the part of amazon rainforest is cleared because of the cultivation of soybean and conservation to grassland for raising of beef cattle so this is the most dangerous thing that's why habitat loss and fragmentation consider is most important cause of loss of biodiversity now the second one is over exploitation now this one is the another one when need turns to greed it leads to over exploitation of natural resources that is unnecessary we are consuming more than what we required actually whatever the natural resources we are getting from nature we are using more than what we have required so this is called over exploitation the humans due to their greed and increased exploitation of natural resources have contributed to the endangerment of commercially important species of plants and animals if we can take an example species such as stellar sea cow and passenger pigeon have been extinct due to over exploitation of humans 
right so this is an over exploitation this is an example of over exploitation the species stellar sea cow and passenger pigeon have been extinct due to over exploitation by humans so this is the second important second important reason now if you go through the third one which one is the second most important alien species invasion now what is alien species invasion the unintentional or deliberate introduction of alien species causes the declination of the indigenous species if the exotic species is introduced into a local area because of the domination of exotic species the local species get destroyed so that is called alien species invasion one example is given here nile perch nile perch introduced in lake victoria in east africa led to the extinction of more than 200 species of cichlid fish in the lake right nile perch is a exotic bird right when it is introduced into lake victoria east africa it feeds on the fishes and because of this there are more than 200 species of cichlid fishes in the lakes are extinct so this is an alien species invasion now invasive weeds like species like parthenium common name is carrot grass lantana and water hyacinth icornia causes environmental damage and pose a threat to indigenous species we have discussed about the water hyacinth it is commonly called terror of bengal right it grow very rapidly by vegetative reproduction and when it grow very rapidly it occupies 90% of the area of pond so because of this the biological oxygen demand will increase okay so this is a one more example of alien species invasion then the recent example of african catfish clarius garipinus clarius garipinus is a african catfish introduced for aquaculture introduced for aquaculture proposed purpose is posing a threat to indigenous catfish in the indian rivers so to increase the productivity of pc culture we have introduced exotic fish that is african catfish clarius garipinus into the indian ponds but now it is going to be very threat for the extinction of indigenous catfishes that is clarius batracus so these are all the different examples of alien species invasion right now the fourth one is called co extinction what is co extinction when a plant or animal becomes extinct the another plant or animal which depend on it in an obligatory may also become extinct if a species is completely depending on other and whatever the dominant species is there if it is extinct so the second one which is completely depend on that it will also going to be extinct if we take an example of plant pollination it's a mutualism symbiosis we already discussed right pollution takes place out of the total po pollination count 50 percent of the pollination takes place by honeybees only throughout the world if the honeybees were extinct what will happen the pollination 50 percent come down if the pollination come down what will happen the productivity of the plant will get adversely affected so because of the extinction of honeybees the productivity of the plant affects and because of the plant productivity affects the whole ecosystem will get destroyed so this is called co-extinction so pollination is a most important example that is a mutualism it's a kind of uh, symbiotic relationship the extinction of one partner will eventually lead to the extinction of others also so all these four habitat loss fragmentation over exploitation alien species invasion and co-extinction 
all these four are considering together the evil for cat which is more dangerous for the loss of biodiversity now the next topic is conservation because we are getting loss so we have to protect our biodiversity so it is most important this is very necessary so how can we conserve this biodiversity and why should we conserve so to understand why should we conserve this biodiversity we have to understand the three most important utilitarian concepts so we'll discuss what exactly the conservation of biodiversity here the reasons for conservation of biodiversity is grouped into three categories right why should we conserve the biodiversity now these three categories are first category is narrow utilitarian arguments second one is broadly utilitarian arguments and third one is ethical reasons right narrow utilitarian broadly utilitarian and ethical reasons so what exactly these utilitarian arguments will discuss one by one here first we'll go with the narrow utilitarian arguments okay first we'll go with the narrow utilitarian now what is narrow utilitarian the human derives countless direct economic benefits from the nature we all know food that is cereals pulses fruits firewood fiber construction material everything construction materials everything we are getting from the nature so we are completely depend on the nature only we are also depending on different natural resources for industrial products that is tannins lubricants dyes resins perfumes etc we are also getting different medicines from the plant products so we are directly depend on the natural resources so if we are depending on them we have to conserve them we have to protect them so this is called narrow utilitarian more than 25% drugs sold today are derived from plants and 25000 species of plants are used by native people as traditional medicines right now this is the most important prospective as we have to conserve the nature now here exploring molecular genetics and species level diversity for products of economic importance it is called bio prospective it helps nation endowed with rich biodiversity to reap anonymous benefits it's a new concept right with related to the recombinant dna technology which which works with the molecular genetics so we are getting different benefits from the nature so we have to conserve the nature so this is called narrow utilitarian now the second one is broadly utilitarian and ethical reasons now what is broadly utilitarian the biodiversity plays a major role in many ecosystem services that are provided by nature right like the first we already discussed about the amazon rainforest amazonian forest alone produce 20% of the oxygen during photosynthesis so whatever the oxygen present in the atmosphere out of the total oxygen 20% of the oxygen coming from alone from the amazonian rainforest pollinator layers bees bumblebees birds and bats that pollinates the plant without which seed cannot be produced by the plants okay so this is an example of coextinction also then aesthetic pleasure like walking through thick woods watching spring flowers in full bloom or waking up to quail or bulbul song in the morning we get from the biodiversity so these are all broadly utilitarian concepts then the third one is ethical reasons now each every species has an intrinsic value even if it may not be current or 
any economic value to use. We have a normal duty to care for their well-being and pass on biological legacy in good order to future generations. We have discussed about this, the importance of each and every organism in the ecosystem when we have, when we have discussed about the food chain and food web, right? So even the phytoplankton is not visible clearly, but they are the major producers in the pond ecosystem. They are deriving all the food which is provided by, which is supplied to the next trophic levels. So each and every species has its own importance in the nature. So we have to conserve each and every species. It is called ethical creation. So these are three important concepts to conserve the biodiversity. We have to conserve the biodiversity. Now if we move to the next, the conservation methods. The next is the conservation methods. Now what are the conservation methods? There are two important conservation methods are there. In situ conservation and ex situ conservation. Right? Now first we'll move with the in situ conservation. Right? And here, biodiversity conservation methods. There are two basic approaches of biodiversity conservations are in situ conservation that is on site that is natural habitats and the second way is ex situ conservation off site that is artificial habitats now what actually these are okay so if we observe the first flow chart that is about the in situ conservation right in situ conservation can be divided into two categories. First is biodiversity hotspot, and second one is protected areas. Right? We are, the in situ means it is on that is a natural habitats. Now, the natural habitats can be divided into two categories one is biodiversity hotspots, and second one is protected areas. Now the protected areas again classified into four categories. Biosphere reserves, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and sacred groves. Protected areas can be classified into four categories. Biosphere reserves, national parks, wildlife sanctuaries, and sacred groves. So we'll this one after one. First we'll go with the biodiversity hotspot. What is hotspot? The area which consists large number of diversified organisms is to be considered as hotspot because it has a different types of species in an area and it is protecting. So it is called biodiversity hotspot. Western parts of India, right? Western parts of India are considered as a major hotspot in the world okay so now we'll discuss with the example what are biodiversity hotspots now it is in a most important example of in situ conservation that is the protection of species in their natural habitats now what is hotspot these regions are with high levels of species richness and high degree of endemism now the endemism word is most important that is the species that are confined to that region and not to be found anywhere else. Right? If you take an example of the Bengal tiger, it is only located in an India only. If you take an example of one horned rhinoceros, it is belongs to India only. If you take an example of Asiatic lion, it is only present in the India only, that is in Gir forest of Gujarat, right? So these are endemic species. That means they are confined to particularly one region only and they are not present anywhere else in the world. And that kind of phenomenon is called endemism. The regions are with high levels of species richness and high degree of endemism. That is called biodiversity hotspots. Right. The total number of biodiversity hotspots in the world are 34, 
according to your NCRT record. But as per the new record, that is till February 2016, there are two more added: the North American Coastal Plain, right? So now it is it is 36 total biodiversity hotspots. Hotspots are there in the world. These hotspots are regions of accelerated habitat loss. As they are diversified animals having, but the speed of loss of biodiversity is getting very rapidly. Three hotspots which covers Indian biodiversity regions are Western Ghats, as we already discussed. The second one is Sri Lanka, and third one is Indo Burma and Himalayas. These are the three most important hotspots among the world hotspots, which are belongs to the Indian continent. Western Ghats, Sri Lanka and Indo Burma Himalayas. As Western Ghats witnessed, there are more than 200 types of amphibian species alone. So it is a considered as a hotspot. Now these hotspots are can reduce the ongoing mass extinction by almost 30%. That is anthropogenic extinction we are discussing. The nowadays, whatever the mass extinction is going in the human period is called anthropogenic extinction. If it is carried very rapidly, so in upcoming some years, we can lose 30% of the species from these hotspots. So these are all biodiversity hotspots. Now the second one is protected areas. Now the protected areas, cortex, natural parks, right? Scared groups. So what actually these protected areas? We'll discuss here. Now these are ecologically unique and biodiversity rich regions. These are legally protected as biosphere reserves, national parks, sanctuaries, etc. Right? India has 14 biosphere reserves. 90 national parks and 448 wildlife sanctuaries. So this is the data given by your NCERT textbook. So, but recently, the number of national parks increases up to 105 nowadays, right? So sanctuaries also more than 550 wildlife sanctuaries are there. So now the first national park setup in India was Jim Corbett National Park. Jim Carbet National Park is the first national park set up in India, which covers an area of approximately 525 square kilometers in the foothills of Nainital and Pauri district of Uttaranchal state. Right? It is located in the Uttaranchal state in Nainital and Pauri districts. So it is the first national park which was set up in India. The other national parks are Kaziranga National Park, famous for one horned rhinoceros. It is an endemic species. It is located in India, especially in Assam only. Gir National Park, located in Gujarat, famous for Asiatic lands. It is an again endemic species. Bandipur National Park, famous for elephant. It is Karnataka. So it is an again endemic species. So all these are different national parks. Now the scale groups. Now the, what are the scale groups? Sacred groups are the forest areas, which are protected by tribal communities. That is, the scared groups, the sacred groups are a group of trees, are the group of a short, a small forest set aside, and all the trees and wildlife within were venerated and given total protection by tribal community. These are called sacred groups. Right? Some of the sacred groups in India are Western Ghats area of Maharashtra and Karnataka, Khasi and Jayantia Hills in Meghalaya state. Aravali Hills of Rajasthan and Sarbuja. Right? It was not actually Sarbuja, it is Gujarat. Right? Aravali Hills of Rajasthan and Gujarat. Chanda and Bastar areas in Madhya Pradesh. So these are all different sacred groups located in different states. Okay? So these are all protected areas. Different sanctuaries are tiger sanctuaries, most important. Right? We have more than 45 tiger sanctuaries around the India. Right? And the tiger sanctuaries are to protect the tigers under the project 
called Tiger Project. Right? The Tiger Project was started in India in 1973. So from 1973, there are different tiger centuries are developed. Okay. So these are our protected areas which are under the observation of governments. So they have some restrictions. The general people cannot enter into that particular area. So these are our protected areas by the government under legal procedures. So these are all called protected areas. So all these protected areas and bio, um, biological diversity hotspots, all these are considered to be as a in situ conservation methods, which is conservation of organisms in their natural habitats. And the hotspots consist most important endemic species. Okay, so these are all the different methods of in situ conservation that is the conservation of nature in their natural habitats. Okay.